men are like a fine wine. I know that women think that they're like a fine wine, but that's wrong. <laughs> women are like champagne. They're best when they're first opened. And I kid you not, I remember going home. And I looked at Colleen and I said, I think I made a mistake. I don't think I was supposed to break up with him. <laughs> hey, Colleen, she's so sweet. She's like, let's pray about it. <laughs> we never met. It was a while off. And then Sarah finally, a couple months later, she's like, just text her. I'm like, just text her. I haven't even met the girl. So I text her. And she's like, hello, who is this? I'm like, oh, this is Logan, you know, blah, blah, Sarah's friend. She's like, oh, hey, how are you, you know? And Sarah's apparently been whispering in her ear for like three years about me. I think it was two to three days, you know how the guys like play it cool, like I'm a texter. <laughs> I'm a texter three days later, so she doesn't think I'm like, you know. He texted me and I was so busy, I was in my second to last semester of nursing school, and he said, hey, or hello, you know, Logan, he's a cutie, so he said smiley face. And she just replies, who is this? So. <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little like, oh, okay, like somebody obviously not important enough to save the number in your phone. <laughs> and one thing you can tell, you know, Logan's really a good guy because, and it's not just that he says he loves her, but you can tell by the way he looks at her, the way he talks to her, even when she is wrong, which she'll never admit that she is wrong or when she's argumentative, or she has to have her way. I, I love his term. He says, yeah, Keith, she's just being a little sassy today. <laughs> like eight months later, James, I'm up at his house, and he's like, hey, like Katie's coming over today. You, should, you, know, you guys should meet and hang out, and we're going to go bowling later and do some stuff. And sure enough, she comes up, we hang out, and uh, we kind of hit it off from there. Friendsgiving was shortly after, and it was like we were the only people there. We sat and talked, and every so often someone kept, where's Katie, where's Logan? We were in the same spot. We just sat there and talked like all night long. Probably a couple hours, pretty much the whole Friendsgiving, uh, just by ourselves and just like really connected well. Huh, there's something about you. You're fun. I kind of like you. I could, talk, I could talk to you for forever. Hi, beautiful. <laughs> You look so great. <laughs> I love this. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. You see the back? Do you spin? <gasps> oh, I didn't see the train with you standing there. Oh. That's amazing. I've been emotional all day. <laughs> you know. Come on now. You look great. <laughs> you look great, babe. <laughs> You know, I've been asked by people I work with and friends and family, you know, what I thought about him. And I probably would have never said this to you, but if Katie would have ever came, <clears throat> man, this alcohol is coming. If she would have ever came to me and said, Dad, there's so many guys out there, I'm going to need help finding the right one, he'd have been at the top of my list. We went to the Festival of Lights and I kind of, she was busy with school, finishing up, graduating, um, taking her boards, being RN and stuff. She was just having a really busy time of her life and didn't really want or need an extra person at the moment. And she was gonna tell me like, I just can't right now. And sure enough, she did. Jesus and her relationship with the Lord means so much to her. I'm gonna back off, you know, because I don't wanna get in the way of that. Spent some time, a couple weeks of like praying and really leaning in and we could not stop texting each other. You know, and he was just the whole time, he's just so gentle, like, can I just be your friend? <laughs> can I just love you from afar? You know, if that's all I get, you know, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, marry me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't see no ring. <laughs> Oh 
don't forget, most important in this life is God. The most important attire is your smile. And you both have the same teeth, so we all know that. The most powerful force is love, and the greatest weapon is prayer. Believe in your heart that you're meant to live a life full of passion, purpose, magic, and miracles. Those will take you far. Lift each other up daily. You will certainly be glad you did at the end of every day. Be each other's hero. Caitlin, I couldn't be any happier to call you my wife. Finally, get to wear my ring outside at night. This way, I can show the world I'm married and tell them when they ask, what a beautiful woman you are with a heart of gold and just a little sass. We all know I cannot vow to be on time <laughs> or to play it cool when I see those spiders that have made their way into our home without paying rent, I might add, <laughs> or to keep my sass to a minimum because that probably won't happen either. <laughs> but one thing I knew I could always promise was that today and every day I would always fight to choose you. Logan Matthew McLean, you're my best friend. My forever, the best forehead kisses, and the arms I always want to find refuge. Our love story is my absolute favorite. You would tell me all growing up how bad you want a boyfriend. I'm like, don't do it. Please don't do it. <laughs> I'm begging you. You do not want a boyfriend. I have been waiting for the day that I can see my little sister's face light up like it does when she is with Logan. Like the whole world has completely stopped and nothing else has mattered. The restaurant that we were going to, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna show up here with my hopefully soon to be fiance and I don't care how many people's in here, it's gonna be at 4.30, tell me there's a 45 minute wait. Sure enough, uh, we get up there at like 4.30 and she's like, yeah, I have seating for two and she's like, uh, and she kind of looks through her book, she played it off well. She goes, I'm sorry, it was a 45 minute wait. And I'm like, all right, well, that's fine, jot us down. We're just gonna maybe go walk by the river or something, we'll be back. It was in this moment, he gently grabs my hand and like holds it. And I go, oh, you don't ever do that. You don't, you don't ever move my hand. <laughs> I don't want to point them out first because it'll look a little odd. So she's like, right instantly, she goes, that's Aaron and Lindsay. I'm like, oh, sure enough, look at that. It is Aaron and Lindsay, isn't it? So we go down there and Aaron's cue and my cue, when we know like they're gonna walk away and then turn around and take pictures with us, he's like, yeah, we're, we're hungry, we're gonna go get something to eat. And I was like, okay, we're gonna go eat because that's what he said we were here to do. And he was like, where are you going? As soon as he did that, I knew, I'm like, Oh shoot, what I do? I grab my phone and text Sarah and said, something's happening, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and I just like pulled her around and just told her I loved her, hit a knee. I blacked out, he got on one knee. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a ring on my finger and we went to bed. <laughs> That's the story. We were both in the kitchen and I opened up a box of aluminum foil and I said, oh, it looks like we're out of aluminum foil. There's only three inches left on the roll. I'm going to throw it out. And I just heard Kitty say, aw, did you just aw about aluminum foil? <laughs> and sure enough, she did. <laughs> so if she is that empathetic toward an inanimate object, <laughs> you can imagine how much more compassionate she is um, toward people. As they continue to know the grace of Christ and the way that He's loved them, that they learn better how to give and to receive that grace. And we have been such um, joyful participants as we've watched them grow in that together in dating and are so excited to watch them do that even more so in marriage.
if I could tell one thing that kind of that I learned early on from Logan that I've learned more as I get to know him is that uh, he will outwork anyone in the room and that just made him different from the get-go I just knew from the start that something was different about this guy Logan I would say never stop being the hardest worker in the room uh, work for God first and Katie second and keep those priorities straight.